to get into the nitty and gritty of the nine to five fitness. How did it start and where did you guys meet? Do you want to start, mate? Um, so which dating app was it again? <laughs> uh, yeah, Tinder, wasn't it? Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah, no, we went to school together. So I think we met in year six, did we? Yep. Did we like each other when we first met? Kind of. We both didn't have any mates. Yeah. Um, so, but we were like kind of acquaintances. Mm. Uh, Gab was a bit of a loser, but yeah. took him under the wing later on in life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, and then I left the school, right? And then we kind of rekindled our friendship after year 12, started training together, literally became like a brotherhood. Then I went on an exchange, left you for six months, and we'd spent <laughs> every single day together training, yep. everything like that. And I was on exchange in Malaysia, and we actually messaged each other at the exact same time. I was like, <laughs> all my mates are asking me for workout programs, blah, blah, blah. Um, he was like, I want to start like a gym apparel business. And we we're like, let's do it together. I literally remember like traveling in Sri Lanka in the back of a tuk-tuk on my laptop, writing up the business plan with some ridiculous name and sending it to him. And as soon as I got back home from exchange, we registered the business day dot. I had no idea what we were doing for eight months, didn't make a sale. And like it slowly picked up momentum and snowballed from there. And so first thing we bought was socks, Mm. um, first item of apparel. And look, if you're starting a business, probably not the best item to start with. Why Um, not? Oh, look, overhead's probably unnecessary <laughs> for the uh, price you're going to charge. Yeah. Um, we bought the socks. We sold out 100 pairs. Uh, we're still no, running we those socks. we had 200. Because oh, they're two different colours. Yeah, that's right. But oh, at the right. very start, it was just like family and friends feeling sorry for us yeah. and buying them. They're like, these losers, they're selling socks, <laughs> right? And eventually, once like all these 16-year-old footy boys started watching our TikTok content, uh, it started snowballing and then we released more merch and the socks sold out as well as a bunch of other items and kind of went from there, I suppose. That That's unreal. So did it really start to gather legs from the TikTok? And, and when was that? Was that middle of last year or was that like a couple of years ago? So I remember it. You were working like a concierge job, right? Yeah, rough job that one. Yeah, we were grinding away. He'd be waking up at like 5 a.m. for the 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. shift. Oh, wow. And I was like, we're never getting on TikTok. It is so cringy. And he was like, no, nah, we got to do it. Let's upload one. So he'd go in his real low morning voice. August 2020 yep. is when we started. Yep. And he'd go, just clips of us working out. This is a close group bench press here. This is how you do it. Three reps, yeah. three, three sets, eight reps. And a couple of them would actually get a few views. Yeah. And I yeah. remember within a month, it was my birthday and we hit 10K followers on TikTok. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And after that, we just kept, you know, filming when we'd be working out and stuff. And I suppose it went from there, really. So were you guys into content before the business started or... Did you start the business thinking you could just make the business? But then when you found out how valuable content was, you were like, oh, geez, this seems like a great avenue to really push what we're making. I think it, Gab, Gab was like relatively into it, kind of researching it a little bit and stuff. I was the classic, very nervous footy guy, like kind of probably not a whole lot of confidence in myself and yep. nervous of that tall poppy syndrome kind of thing of that goes on in Australia. So yeah. um, Gab was like the real pioneer in, in the, on the content side of things. We had an Instagram um and and i kind of just followed on when i saw uh what kind of what content could do uh, especially for our business i remember when we first started we were so nervous and we'd say all right any photos on the instagram our faces can't be in it and our tops have to be on and it's literally <laughs> just the business just the merch yeah. like our values being brought forward and yeah. that all kind of went out the window <laughs> at some point but i think when we kind of worked out that confidence and at the start we we're very scared about like what people were talking behind our backs and being judged but yeah, I don't know. It just all snowballed and we got into it. So when, so you guys would have been about 20 when you decided to make the content yeah. and whatnot. Was it a bit like we've got nothing to lose or was there elements of nerves like after each post going, oh, what am I doing? Was it a little bit of un, unsure, un, unsurety? I think it's the word I was asking. Yeah. Oh, what do you reckon? I think at the start, I was had anxiety every time I post. <laughs> I'd be like, how many likes is this getting? That. How many comments? And that probably went up to pretty recently until I learned to kind of emotionally detach myself from how many views something gets and whatnot because yep. you can't control it. Yeah. Um, but at the start, it was like a minuscule following and I cared so much more about what people thought, you know, the performance of the post and things like that. We were lucky enough that a lot of the, uh, you know, 
stuff that was getting talked behind our backs was behind our backs like we didn't know about it at the time necessarily genuinely um, yeah, and yeah. although we were nervous like you still push through and and you felt pretty like rewarded when mm -hmm. you know a good good you made a good post and people started messaging us saying uh, that we helped them out in some way yeah for sure I, I can relate to that heaps because like i was trying to get into radio for a long long time mm. and i was trying to get into radio because that seemed like a bit of a safeguard like if i was employed by like a big radio network then no one could say that i wasn't good enough to do it and then it got to a little bit of a stage where i couldn't get a gig in radio and making content and youtube seemed like the only option so i guess for me it was like this is the only thing i have because if i don't mm. make if i don't do this then i'm not going to get into media and content and it, it almost gave me no choice yeah 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 I, and finding that kind of niche market where you can just uh start uploading by yourself and you know radio is kind of like a bit like the arts um you need to kind of get outside the box and and present yourself as someone different it's definitely the best way to go um how handy was it having the both of you in it together because for me when i first started i had a couple of mates that were hopping in and out of videos but it was me editing mm. really poorly um and and me creating some pretty average content but i just sort of stuck with it and i guess um, seeing you boys do it it's like it'd be so handy having someone doing the exact same thing and we're in it together I personally couldn't have done it without Gab <laughs> um, you know like I was so nervous at the start uh, but then you know later and as, as our content started growing uh, getting getting hate comments and that kind of thing like uh, we were talking about it before like yeah I kind of go to go to water a little bit if you know yeah. people are talking yeah. <laughs> saying bad things about me so doing it together was really important for me oh, it definitely makes it so much easier but you know it would be even better if we had like a a third housemate who could film the both of us because a yes. lot of the time it's me getting a flick of louis louis getting a flick of me or it has to be self time with the both of us whereas it yeah. kind of lacks that perspective if we could have a third man there you know constantly filming a skit or something like that so that'd be really elite uh but definitely is handy having the both of us yeah i think that's the next the next big thing for you boys mm -hmm. um speaking about the hate comment so i'm bringing this up because recently um, Prime Train, so I've done some content with him. You guys know him very, very well. Um, he put up a post of another TikToker. I think his name's Blake Hargraves, yep. who does a lot of TikTok around, um, yeah, like working out and whatnot. He plays footy on the weekends, and it just by the video that's been put out, it seems like every weekend he cops just the most absurd abuse. Um, I want to talk to you boys about like the negativity online especially around some of the fitness pages and fitness videos mm -hmm. and how you guys seem to deal with that yeah negativity we get a lot of it <laughs> um there's plenty of it uh I, it, like we deal with it well i think we deal with it together there's been times when it's been very difficult um I'm, i know gab's had a fair bit more than i have but um you know prime trains had a had a huge amount uh but you know you, you get through especially together